Hi, my name is Rachel Busbridge. I'm a research associate at La Trobe University's Thesis 11 Centre for Cultural Sociology, and this is a video abstract from my article in Theory, Culture and Society called Israel-Palestine and the Settler Colonial Turn, From Interpretation to Decolonization. In this article, I am interested to trace the recent resurgence of settler colonialism as an analytical framework through which to understand the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and to engage its wider conceptual, political and normative implications. Connected to the rapid institutionalization of settler colonial studies, what is striking about the so-called settler colonial turn is how it has seen Israel and its relationship to the Palestinians brought into comparison alongside white settler societies like Australia, Canada and the United States. In the article, I make two main arguments. The first is that this turn cannot be read outside of the growing internationalization of the Palestinian cause because of the ways in which it increases the readability and accessibility of the Palestinian struggle in sympathetic terms. The second is that, as much as this turn has potentially important counter-hegemonic implications, particularly with regards to thinking normative solutions to the conflict, its designation of Zionism as settler colonialism pure and simple risks a leading important specificities critical to engage in any project of decolonization in Israel-Palestine. As an Australian scholar who works on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, this is a development that particularly piqued my interest. While settler colonialism is by no means a new modality of interpreting the conflict, having figured in Palestinian, anti-Zionist and Marxist analyses since at least the 1920s, the recent settler colonial turn is characterised by a number of distinctive features, not least of which is its Australian location of emergence with the Australian scholars Patrick Wolfe and Lorenzo Veroncini playing key roles in the development of the field. Wolfe's logic of elimination thesis, which is based on the premise that in settler societies, invasion is a structure and not an event, is essentially the theoretical linchpin of settler colonial studies. And as a framing insight, it is not just a concise but accessible means of coming to terms with the position of Indigenous peoples in settler societies. Knowing full well just how difficult it is to explain the dynamics of the conflict to international audiences, the enthusiasm with which this frame has been taken up by scholars working on Israel-Palestine is understandable. And at present, we are witnessing a proliferation of articles, conferences and workshops adopting settler colonialism as their primary theoretical framework. What I want to highlight in the article, however, is that however beneficial the settler colonial paradigm is for a more accurate and accessible interpretation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it is precisely in its prescription for decolonization that the settler colonial model encounters its theoretical partialities and normative limitations. These, I suggest, are connected to the specific meanings the paradigm has accrued by virtue of the particular context in which it is typically articulated that is, white settler societies like Australia with small indigenous populations, which leaves certain issues under-examined in the Israeli context. It is thus the case that the article operates with a broader question of how analytical frameworks traverse time and space, what types of knowledge they produce as they do so, and what types of political and ethical implications they hold. There are two main implications deriving from this article. First, it joins the appeal for greater rigour and attentiveness to particularity in settler colonial studies, the development of which will rest to a significant extent on its ability to hold the core insights connected to the logic of elim elimination without lapsing into stick-figure type caricatures of the relationship between coloniser and colonised. Second, it offers an invitation to scholars of Israel-Palestine to reflect on what roles they can and do play in the conflict itself. Certainly, one of the difficulties of conducting research in a context of a seemingly intractable conflict characterised by polarised identity categories is that scholarship is never neutral. If not expressly driven by political advocacy, it is nevertheless easy, sub easily subliminated into one side or the other. In this sense, the scholar-activist distinction is a slippery one. Given the ways in which the settler colonial paradigm is emerging as an important part of international advocacy and activism for the Palestinian struggle, what I suggest is that it affords us a particularly useful opportunity to reflect on the meanings, implications and consequences of solidarity at a distance.